Hey YouTubers, I wanted to do a little bit of an update. Um, I was disassembling the 492 double hump or camel hump heads. Um, if you're not familiar with these, these are the uh, baby double humps that came on the 1971 LT1350s. Um, this particular set has uh, 202 160 valves, screw in studs, guide plates with the straight spark plugs. Because apparently uh, you could buy this same casting number back in 71. I think through the dealerships that had an angle plug, which was probably for header header tube clearances or something, you know, to do with racing. But uh, basically these are going on that small block Chevy I'm overhauling to uh, sell. And uh, like I said in all my previous videos, I won't sell someone something that I wouldn't run on my own vehicle. So... During the overhaul process of the 350, which granted only has 3,000 or less miles on it, I want to go through it, make sure all the bearings still look good, probably throw a fresh set of, ring, fresh set of rings in it, because I want to make sure there's absolutely no problems for the end user. Uh, but I was having a heck of a time. Today I was using this, what I call that big C-clamp or big... Uh, it's a piece of junk. It's the uh, kit you can rent from Advanced Auto Parts, but I borrowed this from a mechanic friend of mine. I am in the process of building a big C-clamp version that uses uh, impact or an impact driver to uh, compress springs on small block Chevy heads. I just haven't finalized my design yet, but as soon as I can... Uh, get access to a welder I will get that taken care of so that I don't have to fight with these uh, these just in case you don't know these uh, this style of spring compressor is really hard to use and slips off really easy um, I don't know why it is so hard to get it adjusted to where it doesn't want to pop off the stupid spring but it's it's just a just a a, an event of futility where you have to just keep resetting it, keep it steady, don't wiggle it too much, get your locks off as quick as you can because that thing's prone to just popping off there at any time for no apparent reason. So, not my most favorite tool, but um, as I stated, I think in previous videos about these cylinder heads, um, I wanted to upgrade them to uh, positive seal. So I went ahead and bought a brand new set of Howard's uh, positive seals. So I'm going to take uh, the heads into the machine shop and have him clean them up a little bit in the parts washer. And he's going to uh, machine the tops of these guides for the uh, snap-on or push-on positive valve seals. Um, I'm going to go ahead and have him check the pressures on the springs because, uh, yeah. Those work. Those springs came off of a of a set of heads that I did be previous to this build. Uh, I believe they're the 500 lift Z28 springs, because when I checked them before uh, putting that 350 together last time, they were showing 110 pounds with at a 1.700 installed height, which should be the specs that you would see with a Z28 500 spring. Uh, but I also have a set of 550 springs here at the house. I'm going to have him check my Z28 springs and a set of those 550 springs and kind of get his input on uh, which spring he would run with this little small baby hydraulic roller cam. Because um, generally they don't run a, a whole lot of spring pressure like you would think they would need. But because the hydraulic roller lifter is heavier than your standard flat tappet uh, lifter. Sometimes they benefit by having just a little bit more spring pressure on the seat so that they um, control the valve better with RPM. Cause this, you know, the cam I'm putting in there now, uh, I think it's gonna pull good to around 5,000, 5, 5,200, somewhere in that range. Uh, so it's not gonna see very high RPM or, or let, let me say, it's not gonna need to see a very high RPM to hit its power, you know, peak, because it is going into a uh, 
daily driven 1990 Chevy pickup. Um, it is a re really nice looking truck with a custom paint job on it, but as far as um, radical, the engine absolutely does not need to be radical because that's the last thing you need is a radical engine in your only, the only vehicle you have to get you to and from work because all that does is cause problems and headaches. And uh, I mentioned in a previous video, it, it, it causes even more headaches than you normally would have to mess with when you're dealing with uh, working in the parameters of that throttle body injection from 1990 because it's very, very sensitive to the vacuum. I mentioned before, it was designed to run between 17 and 20 pounds of vacuum. Um, if you run a big camshaft and you go outside of that parameter, or you go below the vacuum range that that map sensor and that computer is um, set up to run with, causes all kinds of idling issues and it's just more problems than, than any of us want to deal with on this particular build. So basically what I'm going to do is freshen up that short block, make sure the clearances are still good, the rings are seating good, make sure that the heads are good, set it up with that nice little hydraulic roller cam. We will get that thing in that pickup truck with that TBI and it's going to be a a definite improvement over a 1990 i think they're rated it it's it's online it says 205 horsepower but then there's other references say it's only got three 185 horsepower so whatever the power rating was in 1990 we're going to significantly improve upon that and uh, make a good daily driver that has a little bit of exhaust note out the pipes uh, should possibly even get better fuel economy than the old engine and you know smoke the tire if he wants to waste you know waste his money and you know burn the tire off if he wants to but you know because no matter how old you are every once in a while it feels good just to hammer down on the throttle and enjoy it once in a while so I just want you guys to see um, I just finished disassembling that uh, second 492 head um, the only way I was organizing them, be organizing these because I'm not going to have a valve job done. What I did was I marked each head, one with a number one, and the other one with a number two, and then I take just an old box and uh, label it one number one, number two. Let's see if Carrie, you guys over here, so you can see this. Basically, it's that simple. I orientate it with a number one or number two with an arrow and then as I disassemble the cylinder head I uh, put the valves in holes that I poke in the box you know ooh, high tech I know but that way I can guarantee that valve goes back into the um, original seat that it was that the valve job was run on it um, those are some really dirty valves so I will use a combination of brake clean and a scotch bright pad probably in a drill and clean those things up and look on I, they will look brand new when i reassemble the heads but i will go ahead and do a, a quick little lap job to make sure that those seats or the valves are seating 100 percent because you know i don't want anyone to have a problem with something that i sell them so you know my dedication to doing things right my ocd which i think i've mentioned maybe in a couple of videos I am not allowing myself to halfway do something, especially if my name's going to be on it. So anyway, we'll get this little 350 put together. I'm pretty excited about the uh, hydraulic roller I've got set up for it. And uh, it should make some decent power and some good torque. So anyway, I'm fixing to load these things up in the car, head down to the machine shop. Let Jack Conklin at Performance Machine in Freeman, Missouri get uh, work his magic on them and uh, get them up to snuff so we can get them on this new engine. Thank you guys for watching. I'll keep making videos and hopefully get some interesting in instructional videos done as soon as possible. Thanks again.